Dr. Don Batavia, and I want to welcome you to the Mayor's Roundtable, where it's all about the residents of Berkeley Heights getting in close, personal, and talking to Mayor Robert Woodruff. Mayor, thanks for coming out. Well, you're Appreciate welcome, it. Doc. It's a pleasure. Pleasure being here. And I want to also welcome our live audience. We now have a live audience. Hey, pretty good. Very huh? good, very good, yeah, Doc. We didn't have one of those applause signs no, either. That was great. Very good. But, but seriously, we do have live audiences, so if you'd like to come down and uh, participate in the filming, you're more than welcome. Uh, in general, there, it's the third Thursday of uh, every month at uh, 645 City Hall. So come on down, bring some questions for the mayor, and we'll talk about them at the end of the show. But regardless, Mayor, let's get down to what's happening since last month. Um, it's April, uh, coming into now, March, going into April 2015. And now I understand there's some affordable housing issues that have come up. Uh, that's correct, Doc. Um, a few decades ago, the state Supreme Court in what's commonly known as the Mount Laurel yeah, cases, I remember that well. um, spoke to the obligation of each of the municipalities in, in town to have a portion of their housing situation set aside for, quote, affordable sure. housing. Uh, that eventually led to what is known as the Council of Affordable Housing, acronym COA, um, and, and each of the towns during that period of time had certain obligations. There was a period of time within which many towns could simply write a check, and that check would go to uh, perhaps another city or municipality. You could swap or you buy You could swap, the, yeah. right. And uh, it was decided at some point in time that that was no, and in fact now it can no longer be done. Right. But there was a period of time when that was done very often by municipalities. Um, it, what it did, it got them out of that obligation, but paid the money to another town. And then there was always the concern whether the receiving town took that money and made and took it and put it to housing purposes, oh, really? as opposed to a general fund. So, uh, in any event, uh, COA, as it was known, uh, was uh, not a uh, not particularly enamored of by our governor, Governor Christie, who uh, indicated, in fact, he, he, he uh, in his first election campaign, campaigned at, at abolishing COA. So um, that at or about 2008, 2009, our town, um, town council, the governing body, had to come up with um, what was going to be their proposed, what was generally known as a round three okay. approach to what was necessary. And it was, it were extensive documents. Now, uh, from 2008. So it's analysis of population density? It's, it's analysis of, correct. of income? What are they? It's an analysis of, of, of of the uh, obviously population, okay, okay. Uh, and, and it's an analysis of uh, the member of the amount of homes that you have in the in the township. Either in other words, you could get credit even when you tear down and build another home up, and so on and so forth. There, they, there are a variety of formulas mm -hmm. which uh, obviously require you to get what's commonly a co attorney, okay. and also get your planner, your township planner, very very involved. Yeah. Well, what happened subsequent to 2008? Uh, the best laid plans is that um, the economy started to obviously sure. tank. So when this township, as well as other towns, had certain plans, well, economically, it just became unfeasible. But at the same time, there were a variety of lawsuits filed, and you had the governor coming in who was trying to do away with COA. Well, about, uh, about two months ago or so, our, uh, our township business administrator, John Basicolo, uh, doing some uh, due diligence on some other matters came upon the fact that we may have some COA circumstances coming up that we so needed to be concerned about. From Correct. Back in 2008. Correct. And um, and we took some steps to secure a new COA council. Uh, this particular council, that's all they do. And um, there, wa we knew at that time that in front of the Supreme Court, this case was getting there. And as a matter of fact, two weeks ago, the Supreme Court came down with a decision. The result of that decision is probably helpful to us. That's good. It, it slows things okay. down. And uh, what, what the Supreme Court essentially said was, COA, you're not doing your job. We're going to put you on the sideline okay. until you get your act together. In the meantime, we're going to make uh, the obligation of, of the, the, the municipality's obligations are not going away. Right. But what we're going to do is they're going to be monitored, so to speak, by the Superior Court of New Jersey on a county by county basis based okay. upon where you live, all right? Um, so how's that good for us? Because now the courts are still monitoring well, our affordable uh, housing situation. Th that's correct. But before, uh, as I indicated, uh, shortly after John had uh, discovered the circumstances, we went out and were very proactive in getting our planner involved and getting the co-attorney involved okay. and recognizing what we had to do 
um, to address this. Now, yeah. there's a, a significant concern because if you are not COA compliant, mm -hmm. um, a builder, a developer, can b bring what is commonly known as a builder's remedy lawsuit. Yeah. They can simply go to the court and say, look, the township of such and such is not compliant. Mm -hmm. We will give you that COA space. Mm -hmm. Well, at that point in time, once the court, in fact, finds for the builder, then you lose all control as a town. Yeah. So your planning board, your, your variances, uh, the controlling density goes out the window. Yeah. So it was extremely important that we maintain control and work with the build. We, we yeah. want to work with developers. And if you can maintain that relationship, you're in a much better state. Towards that end, uh, we formed, it, it, subsequent to the uh, court's decision, which came down about 10 days ago, we formed a subcommittee, which is required, and we're putting together what's called a catalyst resolution which shows that we are in fact moving aggressively Forward. and positively in an appropriate direction. We have 120 days to yeah. submit this. I think we're, we're well ahead of where we want to be. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and at the same time, we have to be cognizant of the fact that there are uh, developers, builders who, who, who can assist us with mm -hmm. these concerns, okay? Now obviously, if we're working together and we're not working under the gun, all right, mm -hmm. of, of a builder's remedy lawsuit, mm -hmm. Well, then we're able to control and work hand in hand with the developers and, right. and, and obviously allow them to develop, you know, to the extent that we can control it and give us what we need. Mm -hmm. So I, it, it was a, a dangerous situation, potentially not just for us, but for many, many towns. And the townships uh, that don't have that extra jump are under the gun right now. I, perhaps more so than us. That, yeah. That's correct. And I'm, uh, right. the, well, the, the committee that I talk about is, mm -hmm. was, it would be Mr. Basicolo, it would be our, our, our co-attorney, our township planner, uh, Rick Beal, who's on our planning board, and myself. The job of that committee is to essentially marshal marshal the facts, find out we're going in the, in the appropriate direction and report to the town council. Well, a shout out to uh, Mr. Basicolo for finding that out ahead of time, so he gets a shout out for that. That's why we pay him. There you go. There we go. Um, so, do we have any idea on what we're looking at yet in terms of how many units, uh, do, how, what, what, what our exposure might be under, under our restructuring of our affordable care uh, um, you know, needs? Okay, well, what our potential exposure was before was in the high 200s. Okay. Um, and we were That's in the- units or? Units, uh, units. units okay. okay. And uh, we had, and, and if, uh, what they did is were, there were three, potentially three rounds. They've done, they've, they've omitted the third round and they're back to really the rules of one and two. So, uh, and in fact, uh, Ms. Greenwald, who uh, will join us shortly, sure. uh, was doing some work for our town planner to get him an idea of what was available and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. As a result of what's occurred, um, two things have happened. One, it's slowed down. Everything is slowed down. Uh, there, is, there is real, um, there's, a, there's a, a, a clear idea of what we have to do. It's set forth in the court's decision. Right. And those numbers, I believe, will come down. Now, we're not sure because there's formulas, right. okay? And, uh, but we think that, uh, and we think there's an opportunity here with in, in certain development areas, certain areas of our town that can be developed where we can satisfy all of this. Good. But the big picture is the most important thing is that the municipality's in control. At this point, we don't have any exposure for a builder coming in saying, here's 200 units, I filed a lawsuit, and I'm gonna put up a five-story building here because I bought the land and you know, you're in violation. Well, so we're that's, protected against that at this time. We're protected. We can't control whether a builder does bring a lawsuit, but we feel that we've covered ourselves. Um, the courts, okay. the courts protected have, as we can protected, be. Right. I'm not an attorney. You're the attorney. Right. So that might have been a little too strong of a word. Well, what's happened is the courts are setting this up. They're trying to, they, they're trying to uh, put a damper on lawsuits. Got all right. It. If they see that a town is advancing, and then they're going to tell the builder, look. Work with the town. Got it. You know, Got stay it. stay out of the courtroom. Let's try and get this thing done. So now, a parallel question. Last month we mm -hmm. talked about the swap. Is that part of this now? Is the affordable housing going to fall into the swap? Do you think? There's a, there's or, a possibility. I mean, I mean, because that's the first thing I would think about if we're making changes, we're moving buildings. Are we going to do both? Well, there's a fair. That's a fair question, Doc. Uh, I, I think it's a little early to tell, but it's, it certainly can't be dismissed it, uh, because if in fact the, the township property on which we are now located uh, does become an area to be developed, if that's what's decided as opposed to staying here and rebuilding on this property, 
then certainly that's going to have to be taken into account. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Because you know, one of the biggest challenges, I think, with affordable housing is that everybody says it's great, just not in my neighborhood. Oh, that's always the case. You know, yes. so yes. What's, the, what's the answer for that? Well, the answer, is, uh, the answer is what came down 10 days ago by the Supreme Court. All right, uh, we're going to have to abide by, by what they say and, um, and, and work within the, the confines of that decision. I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, if, the, if, if we can fulfill this with 60, 80, 90, 100 units, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. number we're at, mm -hmm. uh, then that's what we're going to have mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully they would more than likely be new units. So yeah. Yeah, that's, a good thing. that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Correct. It's good now, thing. Um, is there any benefit to the municipality with uh, owing beyond their affordable housing requirements? Let's say we need 100 units. We put in 150. Is there any incentive for us to do that or not really? Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't think you get any extra credit. That's my point. Okay, yeah. no, I don't think okay. you get any extra credit. Right. Um, you know, we can't it, go into another uh, we can, state coffer and get a little something Right, we more. can't put them in the bank, yeah. all right, for okay. going future. I, yeah, right. I would think so. That's right. correct. All right, well, I just want to check out. Well, okay. great information, uh, COA, uh, or now it's called the Affordable Housing. Affordable Housing, uh, correct. Affordable Housing, lots going on. Stay tuned. We may have more information on it next month. But uh, in conjunction with our current uh, way the show runs, our current format, we're going to have another guest come on from a municipal office. Yes, yes, we are, Doc Robin Greenwald, who is our construction code official. Great. Um, and, and I think she's going to answer a lot of questions that are uh, very pertinent to homeowners when they want to put a deck on or do a bathroom or do this or do that. And there's a lot of confusion sometimes, and I think maybe we can answer some questions today. Perfect. Well, that's what it's about. We're going to hear from Robin Greenwald, our construction official, learn about that. But in the meantime, there's some really timely things that are happening in and around town. So stay tuned. We're going to take a short break and then we're going to teach you everything you need to know about getting permits and keeping them. Dr. Donald DeFabio with Mayor Woodruff. We'll be right back. There are so many exciting things going on this month in Berkeley Heights, uh, April 2015. At the library, we're going to have the governor, the first governor, Governor Livingston, coming to the Berkeley Heights Library. Library Director Stephanie Bacus, tell us about that. Governor Livingston will be coming on April 19th. It's a Sunday at 3 o'clock. This is a grant we received from the Horizon Speakers Bureau of the New Jersey Council for the Humanities, funded by the National Endowment for the Humanities. He is an actor coming from the American Historical Theater in full Governor Livingston gala clothes. Uh, he was a very interesting man. He was our first governor. He built Liberty Hall as a family home. Most people have forgotten that. He was one of the signers of the Constitution. And I understand from people who have seen the program, he never wanted to be governor. He just came to New Jersey to fish. Well, there you go. I'm not going to okay. do any fishing in New Jersey. <laughs> it's open to the public, and I think it would be a good thing for families and anyone who wants to know how we ended up with Governor Livingston High School. Sounds like a plan. One more time. Date and time? April 19th. It's a Sunday at 3 o'clock. Berkeley Heights Library. Come on down. Stephanie, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Lots going on in the area. We're going to dress for success with Mary Jean Barnes. Mary Jean, you are dressed for success, but that's a pun on words. You're with an organization that supports women getting back on their feet, correct? Yes, that's correct. We provide professional clothing and a whole suite of career services for women who are looking to get back into the workforce and to move ahead in their preferred professional lives. So you offer grants, I'm not with grants, with writing resumes? Resume and writing, mock interviews, we provide career coaching, mentoring, we provide networking opportunities for the women, all to help them build their confidence and have opportunities to get back into the workforce. Yeah. That's and fantastic. Now I did a little research and it costs about a thousand dollars for each one of these women a year. Where's your funding coming from? That's correct. Well, we don't receive government funding and we don't receive funding from our parent or organization, so we raise all the money wow. that it takes to serve the women. Our biggest fundraiser is actually coming up. We're having a gala okay, on April 23rd at the Crystal Plaza in Livingston, and um, through that gala, we're able to raise a significant portion of our budget so we're able to serve the women. So there you go. Go to the website, buy some tickets, and show up at the event. Support the cause. 
If we support our women and their children, guess what? It supports the community, more people working, more jobs, everybody wins. A great concept, a great organization, Dress for Success. Mary Jean, thanks for your time. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. It's the Mayor's Roundtable. And now we have our segment from the municipal offices. Our guest, Robin Greenwald, construction official. Thanks for coming out tonight. Sure. So I see you're, you're the gal with the yellow placard. That's what it's all about, right? Yes. That's it. Uh, yellow placards are good. What does that mean? It means that your contractor or you have secured a permit for whatever project or improvement or replacement that you're doing in your home. Okay. So how do people know if they need permits? Um, they can always call and ask. We're always willing to answer the phone or walk into the office. Um, What's the phone number down there with the extension? 464-2700, uh, extension 2120. Great. And um, just ask, you know. I'm going to put in air conditioning, I'm going to replace my boiler, I'm going to put in a new furnace, uh, my hot water heater blew up, a roof, siding, I want to build a deck. Mm -hmm. We're always willing to answer the questions. Do all those things need permits? Yes. Really? Yes. So it sounds like just about everything needs a permit. Pretty much other than gutters and painting, um, most things do need mm -hmm. permits. And it's for the residents' protection. Why is that? Um, well, there are, just like there's good doctors and bad doctors, or good lawyers and bad lawyers, there's good contractors and bad contractors. Okay. And we help, even if the contractor does a little less than perfect job, we help find that and uh, make them fix it for you mm -hmm. before you pay them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's the job of the inspector. Yes. Correct? Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But while the work is being done and when the work is finished, we're going to, at certain preset times we're going to come out and do inspections. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mary, are you handy at all? Not at all. Well, my wife's here. I'm sure she can tell you. I... So you don't do any, any, any work around the house? Uh, very little. Very little. Well, what if he, let's say the mayor was very handy, all right? He grew up with construction background. Can he do his own renovations in his house and would he require a permit? Yes, he would require a permit and okay. yes, most things he can do. Well, uh, what's something he wouldn't be able to do as a homeowner? Well, uh, the hardest thing, the one thing that's absolutely he cannot do is certify a chimney okay. for a heating appliance. Right. Um, if he were so inclined to put a fire sprinkler system in his house, I don't think he could do that. So there's some nuances. But nuances, but most things, if he felt comfortable doing it and doing it himself with his own two hands, yes, he would be able to do them. You, you seem to look at him very directly about doing it himself with his own two hands. Well, uh, does that mean it's different for me to, as the homeowner to do it as opposed to me to come in with a buddy and do it or get a friend of mine that might be standing on the corner of the 7-Eleven down in Plainfield to do it? Yes, it is different. Really? It absolutely is different. Um, the state regulations say uh, in a single family home, you as the owner can do your own electrical and plumbing work, but you have to do it yourself. Physically. Physically do it yourself. And you cannot me? go out and hire someone else who's not a licensed plumber or electrician to do that work for okay. you. Uh, would I still have to get per I mean, not permits, inspections as well? Absolutely. So it all applies? Yes, we're, we're going to protect you even from yourself. <laughs> That's a good thing. Tell my wife that one. I think she'll like that. So uh, what are some of the most common scenarios you see in the uh, building uh, department? Uh, what are the most common questions you'd see come across? Do I need a permit? How long does it take? Well, how long does it take? That's a great question. Um, Different types of projects obviously take different amounts of time. Um, a water heater, heating unit, electrical service, simple trade items, you can generally have a permit within a week. Mm -hmm. um, a, a deck might be a little longer, a deck has to go to zoning, an addition has to go to zoning and engineering. Um, but they come to you first. They come to us as intake, so to speak. Okay. because we have clerical people to accept the application and then we direct it to zoning and engineering as needed. So let's say I wanted to do a deck mm -hmm. or replace my deck. Mm -hmm. um, I bring the plans to zoning or I bring them to you? 
generally to us. Same to you first. Yes. Fill out the paperwork for the permit. You take the whole package. Yes. And then we forward it to zoning for the zoning review. Right. We just help you determine that all the information is complete. You know that you've included your survey. That the contractor, if there is one, we have a copy of his license. Oh, really? All that the he's stuff. signed the papers on all the right spots. Got it. Got it. And then we send it to zoning. All right. And when the zoning officer is done with it, you'll get a letter of either denial or approval. Mm -hmm. So you have engineering, zoning, and construction. construction. So, mm -hmm. Mayor, could you simply explain those three departments now? They're different. Well, they're. Robin has just explained what she does, specific mm -hmm. to what she does. Um, we have uh, Mr. Pochino, who's here, uh, who oversees the entire nine yards, so to speak. You've got Department of Public Works mm -hmm. under that, engineering. So engineering okay. is what? The physical plant? You're going to use two by fours versus two by sixes? That's engineering? You know no, what? That's no, it's us. not. Robin, well, that's you. Right. That's, that's them. Okay. That's us. Yeah. Can so, I ask a question here? Sure. Uh, Robin, let's assume uh, I have an existing deck, mm -hmm. and it's 20 by 20. Mm -hmm. And I want to put a new deck 20 by 20. I'm not changing anything. Do I need a permit? Yes. Why would that be? Um, well, um, it's, a, it's a new structure. Yeah, for my protection. It, uh, absolutely for yeah. your protection. To make sure it's, it's done right and uh, by code with the right equipment. Yes, and, and that also that the, the railings, the stairs, the guardrail is the right height, that the spindles are spaced appropriately that uh, depending on the span maybe maybe you've decided that um, there were two girders and you're downstairs if you're like if it's a raised deck maybe you don't want all those posts sticking mm -hmm. up and you don't want to see all them and now we're going to take them out well the new girder is it big enough to handle the load that you're going to impose on the deck um, how many people are you going to put on it? I mean, it, it, we always get this coming up now, soon. People want to have parties for graduation. And, um, you know, they come in the end of May and want to have the deck built by the middle of June. Yeah. <laughs> it, it takes longer than that. So please come early. What, what happens, Robin, if um, I don't get that permit and I build the deck and now I go to sell the home? Could that present a problem? Absolutely. It, it most definitely how, could. How is that? Um, well, nowadays, real estate agents are very quick in their advertising, rightly so, to enumerate all the improvements you've made to your house. So your listing is going to say new deck, uh, new roof, new, new furnace, new air conditioning, whatever it was. And the buyer's attorney is going to take one look at the listing, and the first place they call is the building department was their permit. And if there isn't, what happens? Um, then we have some issues. We go try to go back to the listing agent and say to them, look, we've gotten this phone call. We have a deck. We, you know, we have no permits. Um, we need to square this away. We have to, you know, we need to get a plan now. Either the homeowner has to find who did it, who built it, get that contractor into us. Sounds like it's a, a potential major problem. It, it definitely can both be. Both the buyer and the seller. Yes. Yeah, it could really disrupt the, 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 the process. The yes, process. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So um, if you're home to, tonight and you know you did some work to your house, own up to it to yourself and come in and let's start early. Yeah. What absolutely. About, what, about, what about fees? What about fees? Are there fees for permits? Yes, there are. Who sets those fees? Um, well, upon the recommendation of our office, the mayor and council adopt mm -hmm. them by ordinance. They, they're available online. They're available in our office. Mm -hmm. And I have to throw out there that we are self-supporting through our fees. We do not Good. cost the taxpayers any money. We like that, Mayor. We, we do. like that budget neutral stuff. We, we do. Like that. So That's let's, keep, good. let's keep putting so, that on. So, you know, if you need a deck or a hot water heater or mm -hmm. a new furnace, yes, you'll pay some fees. The, we don't think we're, from what we hear in the neighboring communities, we're not the highest, we're not the lowest, but mm -hmm. we do pay our way. Excellent. So, Robin, thanks a lot. We'll look forward to seeing you at the office and call, yep. stop by any time. We're going to take another short break, and when we come back, we're going to finish up with uh, questions for the mayor. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio. Stay tuned.
we have another segment here with a new resident, new participant, a new business in town. Tony Loyas, you're the COO of Ronald's Hospital. It's now privately owned. Welcome to Berkeley Heights. Thank you so much for uh, having me. Now, Ronald's Hospital was a tuberculosis hospital years ago. Then it became a long-term nursing home facility. What is the vision now that is privately owned by your company? Well, we have many facilities uh, in healthcare in New Jersey, and basically our culture is to give um, resort-style therapy and care while giving great patient care. So our idea behind Runnels is to have a, a floor of subacute, maintain the long-term care guests, also provide some respite, hospice, and uh, a dementia unit also. You have something coming up now, an event, an uh, open house. When is that? Yes, Wednesday, the 1st of April from 4.30 to 6.30. And actually, Mayor Woodruff is going to join us. So we're very honored because it is very important to the company that the community knows that we're honored to be here. And we really want to be a partner in working with the town to help provide great care to its residents. And we want them to be proud of us. So you're having an open house to introduce people to the town. Uh, you said a couple of things that caught, caught my ear. Number one, that you want to have a, a, a homey type of feel to the facility, uh, that it's a, a new approach. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, you know, care has always been so institutionalized, and what we wanted to do in our building, and we take all payer sources, Medicaid, Medicare, insurances, is give the resident, the guest, and the family, and we call them our guests unless you're living with us because it's your home, a really unique experience where you enjoy coming and your family can come. You'll see our rooms have the capability to have a pull-out couch so you can have a guest stay with you nice. or a resident um, or a, a family member. And that's, I think, important to wellness and getting better, better sooner. Well, thank you very much. It sounds like it's going to be a win-win situation. It's the Runnels Hospital. Come by for their open house on April 1st in the afternoon at 4.30 to 6.30. You got it. And stay for respite if you want. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much. Well, welcome back to the show. It's been a very full show. And again, I want to thank our live audience for coming out tonight. You can give you guys a self applause. You're really good at that. That's Very great. good. Once again, uh, we're filming live uh, from uh, City Hall. It's the third Thursday of every month, 6.45 p.m. Come on down. Bring your questions and join in. Uh, participate in the roundtable. Our residents, get those questions to us, and then we'll get them to the appropriate municipal offices so they can get answered. It's important that they get answered. Uh, absolutely. All right, good. The next question is about the burned out building on Springfield Avenue. It's been next uh, in two weeks. It's going to be a year, Mayor. It's a year that we have a burned out building, basically in downtown Berkeley Heights. It looks terrible. It's been terrible. What is going on? Okay. Well, personally, I'm fed up. Understandable. Uh, the uh, building, uh, its owner, Mr. Uh, Dr. Payon, mm -hmm. came before the planning board about a month and a half ago, and his plans were approved. Hey. So um, there will be, uh, obviously there has to be some reconstruction as well as uh, some work done on the front of the building. Mm -hmm. He's changing the, the facial uh, uh, look of the building. He's also going to change, uh, do sidewalks. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to get the sidewalks to look consistent with as you move down oh, nice. uh, towards New Providence, I mean easterly direction, mm -hmm. um, you know, towards Maras and the academy mm -hmm. so that there's some consistency mm -hmm. uh, at, as per our uh, downtown beautification. Right. So uh, they have agreed to do that. There were some issues there with respect to parking. They were requesting a variance, and it was approved by the planning board. Right. So, uh, so recognize your own personal interest in it, yeah. which, which, is, which, is, which is a good one. But it's uh, been a year. It's a long time. I, I understand. And uh, that's, um, we're moving, and my understanding from having talked to uh, Ms. Greenwald, they're still waiting uh, some of the permits. They've got to comply with exactly what we heard a short while ago. And... Um, I trust they will do that. Uh, I know Dr. Payone was uh, excited about getting this thing squared away quickly. Good. So, so, so there I, we hope, go. I, I hope that's the case. That's, that's, that's the hot topic for tonight. Okay. Um, Dr. Donald DeFabio, Mayor Robert Woodruff. It's two guys sitting around a half round table, the Mayor's round table. It's all about bringing information to you. Thanks for tuning in, send in your questions, and we look forward to seeing you at the live filming next month. Have a great day. Mayor, great show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.